Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I want to talk about who are the Ahlul Bayt in Quran. Now, the reason I want to talk about this is because um, the level of sometimes animosity people have. And what's even stranger to me is the level of animosity people have without knowledge. And so today I want to set the record clear. Who are the Ahlul Bayt in Quran? Who are the Ahlul Bayt in the Hadith literature? Who are the Ahlul Bayt in the, you could say, the, the, the understanding of the, of the people around Medina and Mecca and Kufa in, in the area, in the Muslim, early Muslim civilization? What was their understanding of who's Ahlul Bayt? And that if you love Ahlul Bayt, and if you claim to love Ahlul Bayt, then we should act as such. And we should follow them. And so let us now proceed to see what Quran says about Ahlul Bayt. Number one is the Ayat al Hud. When the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam is told that she will have a child. قالت يا ويلتا She said when she was told by the angels you'll have a child. قالت يا ويلتا She said what? ألد وأنا عجوز I am barren. I can't give children. I'm going to give a child. I'm going to have a child. وهذا بالي شيخة And my old husband he's his his old man inna hadha shay'un ajeeb this is a very strange thing qalu they all responded ata'jabina min amrillah are you you know in in wonder do you marvel at the affair of allah rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu rahmatullah the rahmah of Allah wa barakatuhu and the blessings of Allah alaykum upon you meaning you and your children and your husband meaning Ibrahim his wife and his children barakatuhu alaykum ahlal bayt O people of this house innahu hamidun majid you know when we say salams upon the Prophet Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salayta ala Ibrahim وَعَلَىٰ أَلِ إِبْرَاهِمَ إِنَّكَ حَمِدٌ مَجِيدٌ Keep this in mind. This starts with salam and it's going to end with salam. You'll see this. And you'll see here the root is being given to Ibrahim and his wife and his children. And over here the word is Ahlul Bayt. Ahlul Bayt is being used for the wife of Ibrahim and also the children. Okay, this is ayah number 73 of Surah Hud. Now the most important surah on this subject is Surah Al-Ihzab. Now I'll share with you some important aspects here. Surah Al-Ihzab, ayah number 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْخَطُ الْحَسَنَةِ Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah is the best of examples for you. And the same thing is being said in the same surah to the wives of the Prophet. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 32. In ayah number 32, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let me just make the, Ya Nisa an Nabi, O wives of the Prophet or women of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you're not like any other women. You have a special place. Right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You should have taqwa of Allah and you should not speak to the men that come to learn from you. This will become clear in a second. Men that come to learn from you the deen, don't make your voice soft. الَّذِينَ فِي قَلْبِهِ مَرَضٍ That they will, they will find, their lust will be 
their lust of their heart will be quenched because of it because and because their heart has a disease and always say things in an appropriate manner then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to talk to the wives of the Prophet and say what? Then Allah says, وَقَرْنَا فِي بَيُوتِكُنَّ And stay in your houses. Now over here, two points are going to be raised. Number one, we give one event, one poor part of Aisha's life where she was outside the house in the battlefield. Oh no, Allah said, وَقَرْنَا فِي بَيُوتِكُنَّ And she disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was the reason given in Quran to stay inside the house? Just stay inside the house just for the sake of staying inside the house? No, there was a purpose. وَقَرْنَا فِي بَيُوتِكُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَا تَبَرَّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةَ الْأُولَى oh, Stay in your houses and do not display yourselves like in the former days of ignorance. Okay? And what? وَأَقِمْنَا This is the feminine tone. The noon at the end. وَأَقِمْنَا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتِينَا زَكَاةَ وَأَتِعْنَا أَتِعْنَا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Right? Establish the prayers, give the zakat, obey Allah and His Messenger. إِنَّمَا إِنَّمَا is what? حَصَرْ Is to make something specific. To make, like we say, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Indeed, actions are only by intentions. إِنَّمَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, wants يُرِيدُ اللَّهَ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ رِجْسَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to remove any evilness from you, Ahlul al-bayt, oh, people of the house. Just like Ibrahim and his wife, people of the house, Ahlul al-bayt. Over here, Ahlul al-bayt is who? The wives of the Prophet. وَيُطَحِّرُكُمْ تَطْحِيرًا who is this being said about? This is being said that Allah wants to purify you. A complete purification. About who? The wives of the Prophet. And then we have some brothers who will narrate about history. You know when there's history and there's chaos, there's two sides to a story. And what do you do in that situation? You have to either pick sides, but we have one bit. We have the Furqan. We have the Quran. And we have to side with Quran. The Quran cannot be wrong. History, historical narrations can be wrong. And so if there's some part of history that says that such person did X, but the Quran says, I purified these people. The wives of the Prophet, they're purified. They're the wives of the Prophet This will become even more clear. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them a special position. Wazkurna. I'm emphasizing the na to make sure that you understand. It's the feminine. وَذْكُرْنَا مَا تُطْلَى فِي بُيُوتِ And remember whatever is recited to you in your house is مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ Of the ayat of Allah, the book of Allah وَالْحِكْمَةِ And the hikmah, hikmah is the actions of the Prophet إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ لَطِيفٌ خَبِيرًا Indeed Allah is لطيف and خَبِير وَذْكُرْنَا And remember and remind and to teach you are to stay in the houses because this is where people will come to learn from you. Wazkurna and to remember and to remind. Wazkurna means both things to remember yourself and to remind. Wazkurna ma tutla fi buyuti kunna. Of whatever was recited, meaning of the book of Allah, of the ayat of Allah. Wal hikmah, hikmah is the sunnah of the Prophet. Who sees the sunnah of the Prophet more than the wives of the Prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you're not like any other women? Lastunnaka ahadam min nisa. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is indeed the messenger, is the best of examples, right? We already saw. Let's go back. Right? Laqad kana lakum fi Rasul uswatul hasan. Indeed, in the messenger of Allah is the best of examples, but the Prophet could not be a role model for the women. The Prophet could not be a complete role model for the women. And for that, the Prophet had many wives to occupy that space and that position that the Prophet had. And so they had the responsibility to teach. And remind them. What? what Remind. And remind and to teach. 
to remind others and to remind yourself whatever was recited in the houses. This is the position of your house. It's like your castle. It's where people come and learn from you. And we know through Islamic history, where did people go to learn from Aisha? To her, to her house. Many great companions of the Prophet, they needed a fatwa. Where are they going to go? To the wives of the Prophet. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts this whole point by saying what? Ya Nisa an Nabi, O wives of the Prophet, O women of the Prophet, Lastunnaka ahadam min Nisa. You're not like any other women. And in the Messenger of Allah is the best of examples, and you're not like any other women. And when you teach them, make sure your voice is not hard, is not soft, it remains appropriate. And to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish the prayers and give zakat. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't just stop there so that the issue is clear. So the hizab is very important, right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues. An Nabi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, makes the connection. He's he's not he's the best of examples. Women is not your your wives are not like any other women, right? They have to teach the deen. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again establishes a relationship between the Prophet and his wives. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already called them in the previous ayah that we Ahlul Bayt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them the people of the house. An Nabi, Allah says over here, An Nabi you awla min bil mu'minina min anfusim. Allah's Prophet is closer to the believers than themselves. Wa azwajuhu and his wives are what? Ummahatuhum are their mothers. His wives are their mothers, meaning the the mother of the believers. Now, when you go over here, right, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, right, Inna ma yurid Allah li yudhiba an kum rijsa ahl al bayt. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants to purify you and to remove any evil from you, and so. One protection is being the house, but this is also the place where people come to you and learn. And what? You are the mother of the believers. And that means what? You know, what is the, just mother is the first, that's when you are in need, you need care, you're going to go to your mother. That is the position that they have. And to say the wives of the Prophet are not part of Ahlul Bayt is completely against a Quran. It is in the Quran that they are part of Ahlul. They are the Ahlul Bayt primary. Okay, let us then continue. An Nabi awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum. And then it is not surprising that in durud we send durud to the Prophet and to his family. And it is in this same surah. That says, number one, the Prophet is your example, and the wives of the Prophet, they're not like any other women. They have the responsibility to teach you the deen, to teach you Islam, and they are part of Ahlul Bayt. The Quran is very clear about this. They're the wives, they're your mothers. And then, now, because this is the, the whole subject of this surah is the, what, the, the, the rules of the family, and the family of the Prophet. This is the subject of the surah. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, the al of Muhammad, not just Ahlul Bayt, but al is more, like we say ali Fir'aun. Fir'aun is not just his family, but everyone that was with him. But primarily, his family, and then, and then, and then. So, inna allaha wal malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. So, the lahizab, ayah number 56. Inna Allah wal malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. Indeed, Allah and His Messenger, they send prayers. They do, they send salams over the Prophet. They send blessings over the Prophet. Ya yuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Oh, you people believe, send salams upon the Prophet. But how to send the salams? The Prophet taught that. And he included his family in that. And the family, the house includes the the man, the, the husband, the wives, the children. And so, now, who grew up in the house of the Prophet? See, 
the daughters of the Prophet had passed away. Every single daughter of the Prophet had passed away in his lifetime. And by this time he had only one daughter left, Fatima. And she had two children, Hassan and Hussein, and her husband Ali, who he also raised as his own. So now, let us look at, now that we understand this, that the wives of the Prophet are being talked about as Ahlul Bayt in the Quran, in the feminine language. Now when this ayah was revealed, this part of the ayah, the last part, interestingly enough, the last part, إِنَّمَا يُرِيلُ اللَّهَ يُذْهِبُ عَنْكُمْ رِجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah only wants to purify you, O people of the household. وَيُطَحِّرُكُمْ تَطْحِيرًا And completely wash you, completely purify you. So anyone that says anything against Aisha or any wives of the Prophet, they ha at least need to think about the fact, wait, maybe I can be wrong. Maybe I shouldn't be so strict in my opinion that I'm doing, you know, going to, 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 to the point of Haiti. And so this, when this verse was revealed, the hadith says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهَ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ رِجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَحِّرُكُمْ تَطْحِيرًا فِي بَيْتِ أُمِّ السَّلْمَ فَدَعَى فَاطِمَ When these verses were revealed, okay, the Prophet was in the house of Umm Salma, okay, and then what happened? فَدَعَى فَاطِمَ She was the only daughter left, Fatima. He called Fatima, وَحَسَنْ وَحُسَيْنْ فَجَعَلَهُمْ And then he kind of like wrapped them. Okay? Okay? وَعَلِي was behind them. Okay? Ali was behind them, so he wrapped him, they brought them all together. Okay? And he did dua for them. اللَّهُمَّ هَأُولَيْ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ Because the Qur'an was very clear about his wives. Do you think the Prophet didn't love his wives? He didn't care about his wives? So they were already, and the Prophet is very clear about this, as he will say. And there are two versions of this hadith, but this is the more complete version of the hadith. And so the Prophet wraps them and he does dua, oh Allah, include these also, meaning he says, Allahumma ha'ulai ahli bayti. Allah already said about the wives of the Prophet, that they're ahlul bayt. If they were already part of ahlul bayt, the Prophet wouldn't have a need to bring them and do a special dua for them. But because the Prophet wanted it to be very clear that these remaining people in his family are also to be part of Ahlul Bayt, he made a special dua, put a cloth around them. This is a special occasion, right? These are special people. These are dear, beloved people to the Prophet. And he says, Allahumma ha'ulai bayti, Ahlul Bayti. Oh Allah, these are ha'ulai bayti. These are also part of my Ahlul Bayt. Fazhab. So Allah, what was the purpose of doing that? The purpose of bringing the cloth and doing this dua, the purpose was fazhab, to make it happen. Anhum, remove from them what rijsa, let the evil also be removed from them. What Allah said formally about the wives of the Prophet. Rijsa wa yutahhirukum tathira wa yutahhiruhum and make them clean. With a pure cleaning, a perfect cleaning. Qalat Umm Salma. So Umm Salma, the wife of the Prophet, sees this event, and of course, this is something the Prophet is doing something different today. He's doing this very special du'a. And perhaps Umm Salma had not yet known that the ayahs that had just been revealed, because he was just in the house, and and then he got up and he did this. So Qalat Umm Salma. Umm Salma, she stood up and she said. وَأَنَا مَعَاهُمْ I also want to be with them. يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ يَا نَبِيَ اللَّهِ Sorry. يَا نَبِيَ اللَّهِ I want to be with them. قَالَ He said, صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنْتَ عَلَى مَكَانَكِ You are on your station. You already have that. وَأَنْتَ عَلَى وَإِنَّكِ وَأَنْتِ عَلَى خَيْرِ And you are on goodness. You are on خَيْرِ You are on all. You are on goodness. So this is the hadith. So now what is this? The Ahlul Bayt originally was the family of the Prophet I mean the wives of the Prophet was the original. Wives of the Prophet were the original. But then the Prophet wanted to include these 
specifically. But the Quran made it specific to, you know, this is a rule you have to know. The Sunnah of the Prophet can, can't take away from Quran, but it can add to the Quran. Very important rule, okay? The Sunnah of the Prophet can not take away from Quran, but it can add to the Quran. The Quran added the wives of the Prophet. And now the, I mean, the Quran said it to the wives of the Prophet. Now the Prophet added something to it. They were, technically, Ahlul Bayt would have already included, just like Ibrahim and his wife and his children. Technically, Ahlul Bayt, is anybody in the house? And that included Fatima. He's, she's from the house of the Prophet. But to make it extra clear that it is not only the wives of the Prophet wasallam, he took this extra step. So, I just want to very quickly now go over what everything that I had said. Number one. Over here, Ahlul Bayt in this ayah is used for the family of the wife of Ibrahim. قَالُوا أَتَعْجَبِينَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُ عَلَيْكُمْ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ إِنَّهُ إِنَّهُ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ Okay, Ahlul Bayt here is from, for the wife of the Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Then, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةُ الْحَسَنَةِ Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah is the best of examples. And also the wives, the Prophet, they are also an example. Okay, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا نِسَاءَ النَّبِي تَسْتُنَّ أَحَدٍ مِنْ نِسَاءَ You're not like any other women. You're a role model for these. You have to وَذْكُرْنَا You have to remind them. You have to teach them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say what? النَّبِيَ أَوْلَى بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْ أَنْفُسِ Allah's messenger is closer to them than themselves. وَأَزْوَاجُهُ And his wives. Ummahatum are like mothers. How much a mother, a mother cares so much for her children. That's how the wives of the Prophet are. And the Prophet is more caring than that. And then it is of no wonder that this is also the surah. The same surah that mentions them as the ones that are your teacher. You're not like any other women is the same surah that says what? They're your, they're your, is the same surah that then says salams upon the Prophet. Because in the salam of the Prophet that the Prophet added, he included his wives and his family in it, as I discussed before. Okay, so we'll end here. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. أشهد أن لا إله إلا